Okay, we've got a complex circuit up here. What makes it complex is that it's not completely series, it's not completely parallel, okay? So when we solve a complex circuit, we're going to follow the following steps. First, we're going to find the equivalent resistance for the entire circuit. Then we're going to find the current at the battery. Then we're going to find all of the cur currents or voltages, depending on which is the same. And then we're going to solve for the unknown. And these steps will kind of repeat a couple times. So let's go ahead and begin solving this. So the step one is to find the equivalent resistance. Well, in order to find the equivalent resistance, we need to know which equation to use, and that's dependent on whether the resistors are in series or parallel. If the resistors are in series, you can draw a straight line through them without coming to any junction or battery. So, I'm going to start at resistor 1, start drawing, I come to a junction before I get to resistor 2, therefore these two are not in series. Start at resistor 1, I'm trying to get to resistor 3, I come to a junction again. So 1 and 3 are not in series. Okay, I try to get to 4. Well, I know I can't go that way, so I start going this way, but I run into a battery. So 1 and 4 are not in series. So none of these are in series. So we need to check, are any of them in parallel? If they are in parallel, then both their tops and their bottoms are connected, okay, or both sides. So without going through a battery. Okay, so here at resistor 1, okay, we, can, we can't get through the battery. Here at resistor 1, we can connect here, but the other sides aren't connected without not going through another resistor or a battery. So 1 and 2 are not in parallel. Okay, for the same reason 1 and 3 aren't in parallel. And then we can check, so let's check 2 and 3. Well, 2, this side is connected to 3, and this side is connected to 3. So 2 and 3 are in parallel. So we're going to find the equivalent resistance for 2 and 3. It's not the equivalent resistance overall, but it's the resistance for 2 and 3 if we combine them. Since they are in parallel, we use the 1 over the equivalent resistance. In this case, I'm going to label it resistance 2, 3 because it's not the entire circuit. It's just resistors 2 and 3. So 1 over resistance 1, or sorry, 2, plus 1 over resistance 3. So I end up with 1 over the equivalent resistance for 2 and 3 is equal to 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4. We've already got a common denominator, so 1 over resistance 2, 3 is 2 over 4. We need to solve, so you can cross multiply if you want. You could simplify and then flip it. So let's go ahead and say we cross multiply. 2 resistance 2, 3 is equal to 4, so resistance 2, 3 is equal to 2 ohms. That is the equivalent resistance for these two resistors. Now, this is where things get a little different. What I'm going to do is I am going to redraw this circuit with these two combined. All right, so we're going to redraw our circuit. So. We've still got our 12 volt battery. We did not change that at all. Okay, still go up, we go over, we've got resistor one. That has not changed. We combined resistors two and three. So I'm gonna call this R two, three. And then we did not change resistor 4 either, so this is still 6 ohms. Okay, so this is my new circuit, okay? That what I did was I combined these two resistors, and now I've got this circuit. And when we look at this circuit, get a little bit happy because you can see it's a circuit we've dealt with before. This is a series circuit, okay? You can go through each of the resistors without ever having to come through a junction, okay? So this is a series circuit, which means it's a little bit easier. So we can solve that the way we've been solving series circuits. So the first thing we're gonna do is find the equivalent resistance for the entire circuit. So that's just adding them up. So we have resistor one, so three ohms, plus the equivalent resistance, two ohms. That's what we put there, our equivalent resistance, plus 6 ohms. 
So 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 6 is 11. The equivalent resistance is 11 ohms, and we're going to put that at the battery. The next step is to find the current at the battery. So we have enough information to do that. So voltage is equal to current times resistance. So 12 is equal to the current times 11. So our current is equal to 12 over 11, or 1.09 repeating amps, however we would like to write it. I'm going to go ahead and write it as a decimal for now. So 1.09 repeating is our current. Next. Are all of the currents or the voltages the same? Well, in this circuit, the currents are the same. So current is 1.09 repeating. The current here is 1.09 repeating. And the current at resistor 4 is 1.09 repeating. Solve for the unknown. So up here, voltage 1. 1, remember... Ohm's law, so voltage 1 equals current 1 times resistance 1. So we've got voltage 1 is equal to 1.09 repeating times 3 ohms. We get voltage 1 is 3.27 repeating volts. Okay, follow the same process here. So voltage equals current times resistance. So the voltage across these is going to be 1.09 times 2, which is 2.18 repeating. And then do the same thing here. So we have 1.09 times 6, and we get 6.54 repeating. Okay, and now we've got the series circuit done. Problem, we want to find our complex circuit. So here's what we do. We look, the battery, from this picture to this picture, nothing changed, nothing was combined to make this second picture. So everything is the same. So that means the current is still 1.09 and the resistance is 11 ohms. We're gonna go up here to resistor one. We didn't combine resistor one with anything else. It's still resistor one. So all that information is the same. So the current is 1.09 repeating amps and the voltage is 3.27 repeating volts. Okay, resistor 2, not the same. This is 1 made up from these 2. So this is going to be different. So what we have to ask ourselves is, when we combined these, did we combine them because they were parallel or in series? In this case, we combined them and they were in parallel. In parallel, voltage is the same. So voltage 2 is this voltage. Why? Because it's parallel. Voltage is the same, so we come over here to get the voltage. So it's 2.18 repeating volts. Which 3 is also 2.18 repeating volts. Okay? Now we need to find the current here. Well, again, use Ohm's law. So voltage 2 is equal to current 2 times resistance 2. So 2.18 is equal to current 2 times 4. Divide by 4. Current 2 is 0.54 repeating amps. Do the same thing here for voltage 3. Notice we've got all the same numbers. Okay, so this is also going to be 0.54 amps. In other problems, you're going to notice they're not the same. Okay, they're not going to be the same exact number. In this case, they were because the resistance was the same. If we combined two resistors in parallel, but they weren't the same resistance, our current would be different right here. Okay, but we do want to check these two currents should add up to what this one over here is. Okay, here they're the same and they add up. Other times they might be different, but they still should add up to be what it was when we combined them. Then we look at the last resistor, resistor number 4, didn't combine it with anything, so we can just copy down the information. Okay, another little piece of information that I didn't focus on, but that's kind of neat to know, is that when we combine these two 4 ohm resistors that were in parallel, when we added them, they had the same denominator, so we have 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4, so we get 2 over 4. So if you combine 
two resistors that are the same, okay, in parallel, you end up with half of what they both were. So they're both four to start. We get half of that, which is two. If we combine three of them that are the same, we would get a third of what we start with because we get three over whatever that number was, and then we'd get a third of it, okay? If you have four that are the same in parallel, you'll get a fourth of whatever all of them were, okay, and so on and so forth.